click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to study about the chemical concentrations which are actually being used to extract the iron. That means when we get iron from its ore form, the mineral is then converted into ore and that ore is subjected first to the physical concentration techniques. All those physical concentration techniques were explained in the previous session. Over here, now we are moving forward to the chemical concentration techniques. It is very important to subject the ore to both, first the physical concentration and second the chemical concentration techniques and because of that we can ensure that all the impurities that are present in the ore can be removed. So let us see the chemical concentrations over here. Chemical concentration, it is done by roasting. So what exactly roasting is? Roasting is nothing but heating of the ore in presence of air. Now you cannot heat the entire ore as it is. Firstly, you have to make sure that the ore is divided into fine powder and that powder is then heated. Now why do we have to do this? Because of this finely divided powder, the entire ore gets exposed to the air as well as heat and this makes sure or ensures the uniformity and the presence of oxygen and heat to the entire ore. The concentrated ore is mixed with little coal and heated in open heaps in the presence of air or in a specially designed kiln in a current of air. It is very necessary that in the roasting process, air is involved. So either you make it in the presence of air, that means that there should be open heaps. What do I mean by open heaps? That means that if this is my utensil, there should be no lid or covering on it and the heaps of ore should be open and the heat will come from down. So that is the reason why from down, the heat can be exposed or given to the heaps of the ore and from the up, the atmosphere and the oxygen can come in contact with the heap. If that is not possible or if that is one what does not want to do, then a special kiln is designed. Now what exactly a kiln is? A kiln is a device which is designed but that device ensures continuous proper current of air. So a current of air is passed through it. That means that oxygen is generally given to it and heat is also given to it. The following changes take place. The first thing is it removes moisture. Of course, now when I have an ore which is finely divided and heat is given to it and it's being heated in presence of oxygen or in presence of air, the first thing that will go out of that ore is my moisture. Why? Because H2O, the boiling temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. So whatever moisture is present in it will evaporate into the atmosphere. The second thing will happen is carbon, sulfur and arsenic impurities. Now when I'm talking about carbon, sulfur and arsenic impurities, I'm actually talking about volatile impurities. What are volatile impurities? Volatile impurities are the impurities which are present and dissolved in the ore but as soon as we heat them they get removed from it and they directly go into the atmosphere. That means those are gaseous impurities present in the ore but once they are heated to a certain temperature they go into the atmosphere, they evolve or emit themselves into the atmosphere and that is the reason why roasting is very important. Why? Because A it will remove the entire moisture content of it and B it will also remove all the volatile impurities over there. Over here the only thing we are doing is heating the ore. We are not even adding any chemicals or we have not even started with any kind of chemical reactions yet. Only by heating there are so many things which can be just removed. Are oxidized to carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and arsenic respectively and hence removed. So what exactly happens over here is two things. The first is the carbon, sulfur and arsenic impurities are my volatile impurities and that is the reason why it needs heat. Once and heat is given to it, it will trap the heat into themselves, expand and they will just go into the atmosphere. So first very important thing is heat and second most important thing is the oxygen. The oxygen which is present in the air will get combined with these impurities, will get mixed with the impurities. Therefore the carbon will form carbon dioxide. Why does a carbon form carbon dioxide? Because C plus O2 forms CO2. That is the reason why this is done in presence of atmosphere, in open, in presence of oxygen because the oxygen can come and react with all the volatile impurities. So where the carbon gets oxidized to carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is nothing but a gaseous element. It goes away into the atmosphere. Sulfur gets oxidized into sulfur dioxide. Again, it goes into the atmosphere. Similarly with the arsenic. And that is the reason why only by roasting we can remove moisture as well as volatile impurities. Third point, any ferrous compound in the ore is oxidized to ferric. Now what happens over here? is ferrous compound is converted into ferric compound. What do I mean by ferric compound? A ferric compound is nothing but iron plus three times oxygen. So ferrous is converted into ferric. It is very important to convert the ferrous into ferric. Why? If we do not convert ferrous into ferric, the ferrous compound itself will go away in the form of slag. 
we do not want the core metal the metal that we intend to take in its purest form to go away in slag that is not our intention we have to preserve and keep our ferrous and all our ferric compounds safe that means we need iron separated from all other impurities and we do not want iron itself to go as an impurity and that is one of the major reasons why we perform this roasting because we convert ferrous into ferric how do we convert ferrous into ferric again only two things first is heating second is oxygen when heat is given to ferrous compounds in presence of oxygen because of that heat the temperature rises the temperature rises the energy rises and the stability of the ferrous compound decreases and because of the stability decreases it gets the energy to react with the oxygen which is present in the atmosphere that oxygen present in the atmosphere reacts with the ferrous compound and those ferrous compound form ferric compounds ferrous to ferric is nothing but addition of oxygen to the ferrous compound so we have f or feo plus o2 in presence of heat forming 2 fe2o3 let us just look at the balancing of this equation we have 4 FeO, only let us look at the Fe part right now. In the entire reactant part, Fe is 4. We have 4 ferrous in presence of heat forming 2 Fe2. Again, 2 Fe2 is nothing but 2 into 2, which is 4. So again, my iron is balanced. Let us have a look at the number of oxygen. So over here, I have 4O plus O2. So what is 4 plus 2? 6. Over here also, we have, what do we have? O3 into 2. 3 into 2 is also 6. So, oxygen on the reactant side is also balanced with the oxygen on the product side. It is important to convert FeO, that is a ferrous compound, to Fe2O3, which is a ferric compound. Otherwise, the ferrous oxide combines with impurities and the iron is removed as a slag. And we exactly do not want the iron to be removed as a slag. We want the iron away from the slag or we want the slag to be removed away from the iron so that finally we get our pure iron, which is also known as pig iron. Let us look at the second method which is reduction. The roasted ore is reduced to metallic iron by smelting process. Now again it is very important for performing reduction the ore should be the roasted ore. You cannot just take the ore readily or freshly grounded and just start reducing it. First thing is that you have to perform all the processes as they are. The first thing is roasting. After roasting the ore only we can reduce the ore. Why is that so? Because when we roast the ore we already remove all the unwanted impurities and we oxidize the ore whenever there is some oxidizing agents or oxidation happening over there only we can perform reduction we cannot perform reductions on something which is not oxidized at all so the first method used is smelting smelting is the process of heating the charge what is the charge now charge is the main ore plus a reducing agent why do we have a reducing agent because smelting comes under a main process of reduction so ore plus reducing agent plus flux in a blast furnace at high temperature now what exactly is a flux flux is nothing but an heating agent inside a blast furnace i do not have fire on all the four sides that is the reason why i have to add something which will get heated and which will emit a lot of heat i have to add some kind of fuel which has a high calorific value and that fuel will heat up a lot and will emit a lot of heat and will trap in that heat to perform the further operations flux is nothing but a kind of source of energy a kind of fuel which will produce heat charge is a mixture of ore coke and flux in the ratio of 8 is to 4 is to 1 so here this is the ore what is my exact ore the metal which we need to extract with all its impurities is ore plus coke coke is nothing but my coal and flux flux as i told you it is a substance which gives us a high calorific value and which helps us in maintaining and preserving the heat inside the blast furnace the ratios 8 is to 4 is to 1 it is very important to maintain the ratios because we do not want excess of heat to it if excess of heat is there then it will deteriorate the quality and the working of blast furnace we do not want less heat because if less heat is there then the entire process is of no use why because if the proper amount of threshold heat is not produced the further reactions which will take place with the help of the heat energy produced will not happen and that is the reason why it is very important to have the proportions maintained the proportions are 8 is to 4 is to 1 so now what do we have we have roasted ore as 8 what is my roasted ore roasting is the process we also have already done we have removed our moisture we have removed our volatile impurities and we have converted our ferrous into ferric by the process of roasting that ore that is hematite fe2o3 why do i have fe2o3 written over here because this is the ferric form of it which ferric form we obtain from the roasting process source of iron coke as a fuel and reducing agent we have limestone limestone is CaCO3 acts as a flux 
and forms slag. So this CaCO3 does not only act as a flux but it also helps in the formation of slag. Let us see the construction of blast furnace. It is a tall cylindrical furnace about 20 to 30 meter high and about 4 to 8 meter wide at the widest part known as the Bosch. It is lined with a refractory bricks. Now what are refractory bricks? Refractory bricks or refractory materials are those materials which do not expand or do not contract with the heating. That means that if I have a blast furnace, the inner lining of my blast furnace is made up of refractory bricks. That means it is made up of or it is lined with such a material which is unaffected or unaffected by the changes in temperature. In the blast furnace, there are drastic changes of temperature. The temperatures go up to 1200 to 1500 degrees celsius now i should have materials which do not get affected at all by 1200 or 1500 degrees celsius because that blast furnace is used to melt iron if i need to melt something as iron i need to provide a lot of heat to provide a lot of heat that device or that mechanism should be that strong that it can sustain that kind of heat otherwise the entire blast furnace itself will break or the blast furnace itself will melt and because of that we have refractory material bricks lined inside the blast furnace the upper part of the furnace is known as throat the middle part is known as the body and the lower part is known as the hearth let me show the entire diagram of blast furnace so this is exactly how my blast furnace looks. The upper part is known as the throat. The middle part is known as the body. This is the widest part known as the Bosch. And over here the lowest part is known as the hearth. This entire blast furnace is lined with a refractory material so that the heat cannot escape out or come in. And as well as it protects the blast furnace from the expansion and contraction due to the various changes in the temperature happening inside the blast furnace. The furnace increases in diameter from the throat downward until it has in the maximum diameter at the Bosch. We have to remember that the maximum diameter is at the Bosch. Now why do we have the maximum diameter at the Bosch? Now why do we have the maximum diameter at the Bosch? Because we need to understand that over here we will put our charge inside the blast furnace. So when I am putting my charge, what is my charge? My ore, my coke, my flux. When I am putting all of this, it will enter through the throat inside the body of the blast furnace. But when it is entering, it does not just directly start reacting. You cannot have a lot of reactions happening over here because over here this is a delicate part. Over here I have the atmosphere. It cannot come in contact with the atmosphere and that is the reason why we need to give some time to it to come down, come down below the body and that is the reason why the maximum amount of reactions which happen, they happen at the Bosch area. This is the reason why over here we have the maximum diameter. Why? Because we give equal space, a lot of space and a lot of time for the reactions to happen. From the Bosch downward diameter of furnace contracts more rapidly up to the tiers and then it becomes nearly cylindrical. Now after the Bosch has gone. So after the Bosch has gone, now over here we have the tiers. These are the two tiers which are there in the diagram. And then over here this becomes very small again because this is the earth. Now why do we have it small over here? Because it is very important to remove the slag and the molten iron. If this will also have been equally big, there are high chances because of a large amount of space and the heat, the slag will also get mixed with the big iron. So that is the reason why we need to remove the molten iron from one side and slag from the other side. And there are no kind of reactions that should happen over here between slag and the iron. Because finally after a lot of reactions, we get the purest iron form in the blast furnace and that is the reason why over here again the diameter becomes small. The top of the furnace is closed with a double cup and cone arrangement which allows the charge to be fed into the furnace but without allowing the gases to escape. So what exactly happens over here is this is nothing but my cup and cone arrangement. Why do I call it as a cup and cone arrangement? Because this floor is fed into the furnace in a club. So if this is my blast furnace there is a cup on the top of it on the throat of it and then the charge is fed into it through the cup now when the cup gets entirely filled it will tilt when the cup will tilt there is a cone and that cone because of the tilting of the cup and because of that pressure of mass it will go down and because of that the entire charge will come inside again the cup gets filled it gets tilted the cone goes down the charge comes in this happens continuously and repeatedly now why do we do it because we do not want to put 
pour in the entire charge together why because we need to do it little by little with the help of little little ore why so because each and every particle of the ore should get reacted properly and all the impurities should get removed each and every particle of the core should pass through different temperature zones should pass through all the reactions which need to happen and should get the fe out of it and that is the reason why we use the cup and cone method and small small cups that is small small quantities of ore is passed periodically rather than just pouring the entire blast furnace with the entire amount of ore near the top of the ore there are outlet for waste gas so over here near the top of the blast furnace there is an outlet for a waste gas now why do we have it at the top because all the reactions are happening at the bosch since all the reaction are happening at the bosch where will the waste gases go they will just go up because there's a lot of heat all the gases will expand and because they will become light they'll just go up and then they will come out through the waste gases about 2.5 meter above the base of the furnace there are series of tubes called stewards through which blast of hot air at a temperature of about 800 degrees celsius are blown into the furnace so what is happening over here over here i have tubers what happens to these tubers these tubers just blow blast air in it now what is blast air this is very hot air the air is taken at a very high temperature of, of about 800 degrees celsius now why do we do that because there is no other way of adding heat in it apart from the burning of the flux and the coke there is no other way of doing it and that is the reason why the air comes in through this blast furnace and tries to maintain the temperature over here at the base there are two outlets the lower outlet is for the molten iron and the upper outlet is for the slag why do we have a lower outlet for the molten iron because iron is always more heavier than the slag so iron will always settle down and slag will always be up because it is lighter and because of that we can remove slag from this outlet and molten iron from this outlet so over here in this topic we studied the different chemical concentrations of iron and we also studied the construction of blast furnace thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned to ikeda and subscribe to ikeda